So I am live, I should say. Three, two, one, I'm live because I'm live in two places today. I'm live over to you at LinkedIn and I'm live over on my Facebook page, The Queen of Being Seen, Jenny Kovacs, The Queen of Being Seen. So if you have missed any of these that I have done, um, this part of this trilogy, they're worth watching back. They're worth watching back. So these masterclasses were designed with you in mind to get you to think even more deeply about your own version of iconic visibility, what it means to you. So on um, Tuesday, we had the first of the trilogy that was all around iconic offers and therefore iconic content, what kind of things you could start to share. We discussed just a few ideas there. There's a lot to pack in. Yesterday was the longest masterclass at 45 minutes and um, today should be around 30 minutes or so. Um, but yesterday's was all around iconic brands and we didn't even get onto the iconic shares. And we didn't even get through all the things that iconic brands know that we don't. And as much as we love to learn, as much as we love to make a difference in the world, as, love, as much as we love to put ourselves out there, this can change it can evolve um, and it definitely needs our attention so that we can tweak it too. So that was um, that was yesterday. And today, this is all about uncovering your iconic impact and visibility. And this is one of the biggest myths that keep people stuck because people often assume, I know it, I've got it, I know it all already. And you know what, for some people, that's not always true. In fact, um, I was when I was writing some notes about this earlier, about what I wanted to cover, um, one of the things that people tell me that they really want to do in terms of putting themselves out there or putting their work out there, the three main things that they tell me is that they want to make a difference. Because the thing they do, they believe, is very different from how other people do it, which to a certain point it's true, although we might all be doing something similar, the way we do it can be quite unique to us, depending on our design and all sorts of things too. Um, but they tell me they want to do three things, make a difference. Um, they tell me they want to do it with this kind of energy and enthusiasm and excitement sometimes too. And the other thing they want is standout visibility. And there's a whole spectrum of places that people want to do that. Um, they want to be like, ta-da, out there everywhere. Other people are a bit more demure and they'll say, sorry to use that word, word of the year. Um, and they'll say, I, you know, I want my work to speak for itself and make a difference. I don't necessarily want to or like being the face of a brand. I'm shy. I'm introverted. I have imposter syndrome. I procrastinate. I'm neurodiverse. I'm neurotypical. I'm ADHD. I don't get all of this ADHD. Um, I'm a woman, I'm a man, I'm non-binary, people don't get me, um, I'm black, I'm Asian, you know, I've heard every single part of that. Um, and the one thing that um, I'm going to say, because I think it needs to be said, that in my spaces we don't tolerate isms. So any ism that anybody might have around being in a cohort of people a group of people, be it race, be it gender, um, you know, be it class, be it anything at all, um, I don't tolerate in my space. So if you're watching this and you are specifically looking to sort of cause trouble, um, come in, be divisive, tell people that they're wrong about what they think or it wasn't around in your day, then my space quite simply isn't for you. Honestly, you'll, you'll learn better, do better with somebody else who um, believes all of the same kind of things as you. Fair's fair. So even though people tell me it's about making a difference, getting their energy and having that fire in their belly um, and stand out visibility, putting themselves out there, actually what I typically see, and this is whether I'm working with business owners, small businesses, big corporations, founders, companies, audiences, um, people who are in academies, mastermind groups that I also get to speak to, thanks to you lovely um, group holders who invite me in um, in so many different ways and spaces that I can't even begin to thank you. They actually tell me that their desire, they desire difference 
but they feel like they're still in the phase of wanting to make a difference or they feel like they haven't quite cracked their own code on how to put themselves out there or um, how to stand out in a way that um, has people feel who they are. Um, a lot of things that kind of fall under this umbrella are when people tell me that, um, you know, they've spoken to people, there's a lot of competition out there. What does that mean in this context? It doesn't mean um, necessarily, oh, well, once upon a time there used to be three of us and now there's 3,000 of us. What it means is that quite often people, and you know if this is you, people are coming to you and they've had their fingers burned by people maybe within your industry or similar to you. So by the time they get to you, they're applying a bit more caution, a bit more, mm, I'm not sure, I don't know. And that has you feel slightly uncomfortable too. So the other thing is, um, I often uncover when people tell me that their kind of, their get up, get up and go has got up and gone or their energy is somehow seems to have evaporated. What I tend to discover very quickly is that they did have a fire in their belly. They had that fire in their belly, um, but they feel like someone's extinguished the flames. However, once we get speaking or working together, I quite quickly, um, and I don't even think it's down to me. I'm a catalyst in this, but we reignite whatever it was that seems to have been extinguished. So... Even if you feel shy, even if you feel low on energy, even if you, you know, know that you need to do something, if you found yourself saying, but I need to do this or I need to do that, or I need to be on social media, or I need to post more, or I need to be consistent, any of those, um, then you'll find that this is exactly um, the right thing for you. So if you're watching this for the first time, which I know some of you are, so thank you for those of you who give it a little like. Um, I know that you're there and I'm waving at you. And especially for those of you that go over to YouTube, which this will be on YouTube um, straight after I've finished, I'll post it up there too. Um, thank you for those of you who give me a thumbs up, a like, a share, a comment, because it means that I, um, I understand that what I'm saying is actually speaking to you. And I know this speaks to a lot of people. And I also understand what it takes to even hit a like button, to make a comment, to feel exposed in some way. Quite often for everything that I post, and I post daily um, online, that's for me and not necessarily something that you have to do or need to do. Um, for probably every eight times I post, um, I get a private message from someone acknowledging something that I've said in the post, but kind of wanting to keep it on the down low too. So I never expose those people publicly. So if you are coming to this video um, for the first time, my name's Jenny Kovacs. I'm a visibility specialist known as the queen of being seen. And really I help people with very big dreams and sometimes small businesses. So they might be doing it by themselves. It, they might consider themselves small because they don't have a team or don't have employees. Um, I help them to provide life changing products and services to put themselves out there so that they feel that fire in their belly. They feel that excitement and then they can also stand out and make their purpose driven difference in the world. Now, this is important to them because for a lot of them, they feel like if they're not putting their purpose out in the world, what's the point? They haven't quite found themselves yet. So it's vindicating and validating for them and for the people that they serve. But you might say, but I'm not a difference making business. I can't even begin to relay how many different types of businesses and people that I've worked with over the years. But here's just some of them. Health coaches, retail brands, musicians, singers. Yep. Um, language teachers, people that teach personal development, personal development leaders, founders, speakers, tech service professionals, tech companies, travel companies professional association, governing bodies and their members, um, all of those sorts of people. Um, people who have had spiritual businesses, I've worked with a lot of them too. And for most of you, what you are selling is the unseen. And I think about this when I um, worked with um, one particular client who um, is a professional event prof around events. So whether it's marketing events, putting on events for clients, 
you know, um, the marketing part of it is important. Um, copy, being somebody that speaks about it in the industry, doing it from a place of equality and fairness. They were one of my clients too. Um, and I always think when I have, and I've had a lot of marketing clients over the years, I always think, gosh, they, they must know so much more than me. But I don't let that stop me because I know that I'm here to make a difference to help you be seen, you be heard and you be unapologetically visible so that your work goes out there and makes a difference that you almost dreamed it would make for people. So other thing just to know is that I'm in my 15th year. So this old school girl um, has seen enough to see the gazillion ways that you can put yourself out there. Um, and I've seen what happened within the pandemic, during the pandemic, and the post-pandemic tweets that have been needed. But I'm grounded enough to care about you having the right tools for the right job. So in this masterclass, we're gonna talk about iconic impact, we're gonna talk about iconic visibility, and of course, I'm gonna let you know about the iconic program too. I think that's fair. So let me start with telling you about the iconic program and then that way um, you can assimilate and percolate and process and then reach out um, where and if you need to. And I'll remind you at the end what you need to do in order to um, get involved in that program. Spaces are limited and that's done for a reason because I like to roll my sleeves up. It's a hybrid program, which means that there is some teaching it, if you like, um, some coaching um, and it's done in a small group. However, there's also um, an element where you get private calls too. So it's a hybrid between private um, private mentoring, I would say, more than coaching. If you get stuck on something, of course, I'll coach you through it. And also a small group programme. I keep the group small because you all benefit from each other. You all encourage each other. You all remain in contact with each other, which is amazing, and give that valuable input too. So what things do we cover in Iconic? And I'll come back to Iconic Visibility and Iconic Impact and share all of those things in a moment. So um, we talk about Iconic brands, things that Iconic brands do, things that might work for you and actually things that might not work for you. So we look at your Iconic brand, we look at your brand and how you can position that as Iconic. This doesn't mean showing off, this doesn't mean um, treading on people's toes. It doesn't mean ranting, swearing or raving, although if that's what you do, that's what you do. Um, it means you being seen as an iconic person to go to. And there are a gazillion iconic brands out there that might not be household names. And I think that could be you. If you're feeling that, then I definitely would love to see you in there. Second thing we're going to talk about is iconic offers. And whilst there's these six components which on the surface it on the surface look like well how does it work and what do they need to know and how much is it going to cost um it actually lays the foundation for you to build your own iconic offers again and again and again whether they're a higher ticket thing or slightly lower or anywhere in between it gives you the freedom to be able to tweak mold change and in some cases pivot on the very first round of iconic this year i have two examples that i think of off the top of my head Somebody had been thinking of a programme for a while, percolating in the background, and we went through those six components, really honed down on it. It must have felt painful. We did that in a private call, um, but we honed down on those elements and they have since been selling that programme. Um, and not only is it about maybe wanting to charge more money or maybe wanting to have even um, more people look at it, it's, it's you doing your best work, putting it out there in a way um, that is a win-win, a win for you and a win for the client or clients that you work with. The um, I'm not necessarily in this order, by the way, but the third thing we look about is iconic content. Oh, what shall I share? Cry people all the time, all day, every day. And some people just share anyway. Some people sort of press pause and think, I'll wait. Not sure what they're waiting for, but they'll wait. Some people decide, no, I need to do better, be better, be further along, no more before I do it. And that saddens me because some of the people who aren't the Alex Hermoses of the world, who aren't the Tony Robbins, who aren't the Oprahs, actually have really iconic content and really iconic shares. And I see this every day. 
from the high impact people that are in my high impact members club to um, people that I have casually have conversations with to strangers on the street that I've spoken to or out and about in the world who tell me that they've always had a dream to do X, Y and Z. You know, one of my neighbours makes gorgeous cakes, celebration cakes. Um, so being able to do that and share that and create that content that has people prick their ears up and sit up the right people um, is definitely something that we'll dive into. Iconic shares. How to share your stuff without feeling like boast posts come in, come in. And also how to share some of the conversations that you might have with your customers and some of the feedback and testimonials that you get. And the reason that I cover this is because I believe, um, you know, with all the work I do, I automatically assume it's confidential. For some work, we sign non-disclosure agreements and, and, and all work confidentiality agreements. But here's the thing. There are ways to share stuff without outing people and without breaking that confidentiality. And what I've seen specifically online in the last decade or so um, is that where people have said, meet my client X, they were making this amount of money. Now they make this amount of money. Um, people press their nose up against the window, look at what's being shared and then they decide to emulate it for themselves. And this for me is sad because that's not the only way to do it. And actually, it's not the most effective way to do it. And yes, that person may have given somebody else permission to do it. The other thing that I'm starting to see even more, and I started to see this in 2010 when I got started in business, people would be doing one thing in business and then they would pivot because they thought, unless I'm helping businesses or working with businesses to make money, then I can't validate what I do. And that's simply not true. It's the reason why I talk about um, some of the retail companies I've worked with, that some of the more spiritual businesses that help you kind of get back into your energy. I've worked with people who have done things that have got nothing to do with clients and money. And I want you to know that that is um, exactly something that you can do in Iconic and have your work be Iconic too. We cover in Iconic impact and visibility. I'm going to talk a bit about that today. And we talk about um, how to keep you accountable and how to keep yourself accountable so that you're implementing, so that you are putting one foot in front of the other. And specifically so that you're not um, burning out by posting seven times a day, every day, if you don't want to. We will touch on iconic frameworks and ways to um, put your work out there in easy, digestible slices. I've always said to clients, if you are going to share what you do, think of it as a cake. Think of a massive cake, I don't know, 30 portions in it. Isn't it far better that somebody offers you a slice, you can eat it, taste it, digest it, absorb it, and they say, do you want another one? Go on, have another. So don't mind if I do, have the second slice. And maybe they say, do you want another? Do you want a third slice? So you do. Rather than that juicy, big, delectable cake, somebody picks up and just shoves it all in your face. This is the reason why people doubt themselves, lose their confidence, lose their credibility, think they're not iconic because they're so busy trying to give so much in one time. The reason to not give so much in one time is nothing to do with holding stuff back so they come and buy from you. It's so that the person can really feel the transformation and the benefits of what they do. And it's funny because whenever I talk about even what's within Iconic and what we're gonna be covering, that's like a mini masterclass in itself. Even if you sat in a darkened room and figured this all out for yourself, by yourself, or you think, oh, Jenny, I don't need you. I've already figured this out. I've got a five figure, six figure, eight figure, 10 figure business. Um, there are always elements in here that surprise me. Even when I go into some of the big brands that are known in the world, even when I go in and work with those people under a non-disclosure agreement, even some of the brands that you see that sponsor major sporting events and, and major um, things out there in the world, there's always people within that corporation, that company who can really absorb this stuff too. So no one is immune, not even me. We're always looking to be even more iconic, to strive because we want to be the best that we can be to help others in the world too. Okay, so with that to say, Iconic 
um, begins on the 28th of November next week. And we start the first week with um, calls, scheduling your private individual calls so that we can set some um, goals and parameters around what it is that you actually need, where you're looking to head to, what you want to do and how you want to be more iconically you in your business, whether you are the solo person in your business, whether you have a small team, whether you are a slightly bigger business founder um, with people in it. We start off with that and then towards the end of next week, um, I have to check my calendar and see where we start. We'll actually start, oh yes, yes, yes. We actually start with iconic brands. So we get to see, um, we, we cover iconic brands and we plug in how you can make your brand even more iconic for you, for the person that you are. If you decide that you do want to join and you want to join after Monday the 28th, that's OK. It's just £995. And let me tell you, when I think about um, people that have been through the programme, people that have um, secured themselves like new contracts or new deals, they did that for a lot more than £995. So it's totally worth it at that, um, at that price point at that tag um, but if you like a bargain um, you know that this is something you want you want to get involved then iconic is definitely for you um, so if that is you here's what I'd ask you to do um, I would just ask you to send me a message with iconic Jenny send me the link um, and I'll send you the link, the £495 link, where you can get the whole 10 modules of Iconic, which are taught live by me, um, and you'll um, get on to that. If you're not sure and you'll think, oh, I don't know whether it's for me, send me a message, tell me why you're Iconic, tell me what stops you, um, and let me, um, or let us together work out whether this is good for you. If it isn't, I'm going to tell you that, because there's no point me forcing, coercing, having a conversation with you to make you do something. Um, and for the record, there might be something else that's better for you as well. So um, that's what I will be um, offering up until the end of November. And then, of course, um, we will have a cutoff date because it's hard then to be in that small cohort of people um, and put your business out there and be even more iconic if they're already like halfway through or like one more week left to go. So there will be a cutoff point. And then other than that, there are other ways you can work with me um, later on, you know, individually, privately through a sounding board. And the, the um, investment on that is a lot higher than that. OK, so enough about that. Let's get back to the iconic impact. So iconic impact um, quite often, one of the ways that we can impact the world um, even more, especially as so many of us are putting ourselves out there on social media. Think about this. Um, yesterday, I incorrectly quoted a figure, which is an old figure. Facebook is still the most, um, the biggest social media platform. It doesn't have two and a half billion active users it has 3.07 billion active users this means that there are more people on there but they're just not active on facebook this has um stayed the same for 2024 for this year and it was the same last year before that i think it was something like um 2.97 or something like that so it's just under three but back in 2017 it was two and a half billion active users now, if you think about it, this means for many of you, whether you are helping people in businesses or not, maybe you're helping them with their children, maybe you're helping them um, with their health, maybe you're helping them with their spiritual practices, maybe you're helping them with their careers, maybe you're helping them with their language skills, maybe you're helping them um, with their own personal development, maybe you're helping them with their confidence, maybe you're helping them with their mindset. These are all things that aren't necessarily business related, but are extremely valuable and if you are putting yourself out there um, somewhere where your people are, they can see you. Now, Facebook is an example. And a word to the wise, you can still make an iconic impact and not even be on any social media platforms. Yes, I said it. I can give you so many brands. I can give you so many people that have put themselves out there. They've been New York Times bestselling authors, um, very well-known actors and 
and people in the world, um, big retail brands, brands that you've heard of, brands that you may not have heard of yet, philanthropic people who actually don't use social media. And a couple of those examples have never used social media. So you can still make an impact. How do you do that? You look at your messaging. Now, so many people that I come across, they look at them, their messaging and not only do they change their messaging and they normally change it because deep down they feel some form of not enoughness or are not 100% sure. They not only change that um, in a way that confuses people. And I tell you why, um, in my experience, when people have worked with me, why they do that. They feel sometimes that messaging that they see can be really manipulative. It can be um, a little bit, they, they feel like very kind of everyone does this, very cookie cutter to use that expression. Um, and they know that what they do is different. So they want to use different language in order to stand out. The problem with that is unless the ideal audience that you are speaking to knows that you're speaking to them, and it fits and aligns with your business. Because if you then, let's just say you speak to your ideal audience, but then, and we'll be going deeper um, into this in Iconic, which will help you share your content, share your stuff, know which places to go to, know which places maybe to avoid, and all of that kind of stuff. Let's say that you found your ideal audience, you're speaking to them, but you're not doing it in alignment with the business that you want, which is why we start off iconic with some intention setting and looking at where we're going to. And we also um, you also have a private call with me as well. So we can really discuss and start to shape a plan and a strategy of what you do moving forward. Um, so it sounds very ethereal and everything else, but there's a definite um, there's some creative, there's some thought, there's some, um, you know, blue sky thinking and then on the other side there is some strategy some planning and some steps okay and I've probably spent more time pulling things out to not stuff a cake with you to get this so when you want to make an impact you have made an impact maybe to your audience because you you know have got by with your messaging maybe it doesn't pop but you know you've got by with your messaging and people are um, know what you do and reach out to you. And I get this too. You know, I have people all the time that reach out. Oh, I saw you speak six years ago at so-and-so. Um, and I wondered if, whether you could come and speak for our company. Or I saw something you posted and I would love you to come on my podcast. I'm like, who are you? But yeah, let's have a look. Let's see. Um, or, you know, Jenny, I'm struggling with this at the moment. And I think you're able to help me. So that's really magnetic stuff. Could my messaging be better? Always. Am I Apple on billions of dollars a year? No, you know. Um, but what I'm showing you is credible, confident visibility. So when we have the audience, we know who our audience are, but we're out of alignment, out of alignment in our business, it causes us to do things that don't actually serve them or you. Things like, well, People aren't buying what I'm selling, so I'm going to change it slightly. Or I've just seen Jenny say that she has been booked for um, seven keynote talks and she's working her way through those. That's what I need to do, too. And it isn't. Or I heard, you know, Oprah, Marie Folio, you know, someone who's out there in the world. I've seen them talk about this and they seem to get a lot of attention and publicity. So I'm going to do that, too. I'm going to shout in every Facebook group that I'm available to do X, Y and Z so that people can't ignore me and they'll send loads of people to me. All of those things um, are how we act out of alignment. And usually at the bottom of that, it comes from fear, which is again why you have got a nice module that you can go back to um, and forward with loads of resource in it. It's a resource module. It's what to listen to if you need motivation what to listen to if you need calming down, what to do if you're so excited that you can't think straight and you need to kind of just breathe and get stuff done, what to do if you need to get stuff done, what to listen to if you do have a very fiery brain that goes in 101 different directions, so you end up trying to do something but not doing something. So that whole resource module is in there for you for this reason. 
So let's say then you have got your messaging okay, you're happy enough with it, and you have got your business in a way that you want to. Um, and one of the ways um, that I see people burn their business is the third element of their credibility. They want to demonstrate confidence, they want to show their credibility, they want to share their stuff, but because they feel they've got the business nearly okay, but not quite aligned, they actually burn their credibility by showing up in places that don't serve them. I don't want to call it the wrong place because I don't believe that you go wrong, you just take a different turn. But they show up in places that don't serve them and don't serve their clients well. And what that means is they get involved in things like online arguments and then find themselves seething and not really making the difference that they intended to. Or they try to position themselves because of something they've seen somebody else do and it doesn't seem to work for them. So the third part of that impact is to make sure that you are demonstrating credibility in the way that your audience and the people that you're speaking to almost feel it. This doesn't have to be, look at me, I'm the best, I'm award winning. Even if you are, I've won many awards, but the point of me telling you that um, in certain spaces actually just serves to shine the light on me and not on you. And that's not what I want to do. So always think about the audience, your business and your business models. And sometimes we tweak it. Um, another thing that I see people do is they think they should be on social media when actually what they're trying to achieve is best served somewhere else whether it's networking, whether it's in the local community, whether it's through schools, whether it's through um, another vehicle. Um, oftentimes people can harm their credibility because they're not reaching the people that they actually want to, to do the things that they want to do, to make the difference that they want to do. That doubt, as I said earlier, kicks in and chips away. So um, iconic impact is about you revisiting your message and honing that and you know some of the best people I've worked with whether they've been mentors and um, whether they've been clients who um, many clients I've worked with make far more money than me you know um, some of them in the multiple eight figures some of them in the multiple nine figures and big brands and they're the ones that say non-disclosure please you know we can't have you talking about what we do anywhere so I don't those people are the ones that will look at their messaging on a regular basis or have somebody within their organisation look at their messaging. And they won't completely change their thing. They'll just tweak it. So revisit your messaging, not change your thing. OK, now iconic visibility. This is how to have people think about your work differently. And rather than me waxing lyrical about the five key pillars that I created when I started my business that help people, whether they are employees and execs or corporates or whether they are business owners, authors, speakers, consultants, coaches, writers, guides, mentors, it has worked for anyone across the board, even students. I have run this by like, a-level students, um, I've run this by and taught this to um, apprentices and, um, and people who have been graduates at the early part of their career. And every time I think, surely this isn't going to work for them, it provides gold in some sort of space. Now, most people that I work with and speak to, they don't need all of it. They'll dip into different pieces, so they'll take a deeper dive into it. We will go into that in the Iconic programme. And what I do is, because it's a framework, it's not a, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's like, here's where you told me that you're looking to um, work towards or head to, or how you wanna put yourself out there. So let's dive deeply into this piece and um, we can skip this piece for now and come back to it. Or let's go wide over pillars one, two and five, and then deep into pillars three and four. This means that you, it gives you the versatility to make the biggest impact for iconic visibility. This is the thing that has people think about your work differently because you know how to speak about it, you know how to sell it, you know how to show up in your energy or the energy of your company or your business. You know which stories to pluck out for the right time for the right people. You know how to make the best impact and leave the best impression. 
and you also know how to be visible. Is it a stage? Is it a page? Is it a screen? Is it video? Is it a written post? Is it an article? Is it a blog? You know, you get to um, know this for yourself because you are in that, you know, second phase of aligned with your business and the type of business that you want to create. And that means you can put that out there. This kind of business planning isn't just for big, you know, conglomerates. Um, these are for you if you're the person that sits at your kitchen table and works from there between the time your kids go to school and you pick them up or maybe they've gone off to university now and you're thinking well what's next for me and that's what's had you think I want to add another business in fact um, a few people that have gone through Iconic have had more than one business and those businesses have sometimes been very different too okay so this is something that they know about being iconically visible or about um, iconic visibility and that has people work differently for you um, but I'm just wondering I'm probably not going to be able to do this effectively or quickly enough actually um, but I was looking at um, something really like quite cool from in fact it was on my phone I've got a phone there a computer there so let me go to the next phone here because I am um, I actually screenshot it very recently this is when I am going to be looking for it and it's probably not going to show now okay it's a shame because I thought it would make a really great example oh here it is so about this time last year I very cheekily posted um, and shared uh, an advert which actually happened to show up on Facebook although I'm sure this showed up in lots of other places online too and it was won by Waitrose, Waitrose and Partners um, and they said on their ad it's never too early to buy advent calendars, delicious festive cakes, puddings, pies um, or shop bit by bit and enjoy bite after bite. Um, now here's the thing, Waitrose, if Waitrose was a person there's a, a wonderful woman, um, I think her name's Leah Davis, I hope I haven't got her name wrong, on Instagram, who is as funny as hell. She's a radio DJ, a comedian, and talks and um, does a lot about if so-and-so was a person, this is what they would do. If the British weather was a person, this is what they would do. I digress, but what um, if Waitrose was a person and they were doing what a majority of people tend to do that have a business, whether it's big or small, and I said, oh, hi, Waitrose, my name's Jenny. Um, what do you do in your business? They would say, I'm a shop. I sell stuff. I'd go, oh, really? What kind of stuff? Oh, um, just food and, you know, some kitchen items. And we've got another a part of a, a company, John Lewis, so it sells like, you know, washing machines and things like that too. That's how most people automatically talk about what they do. That's good. It gives a bit of information. It's not necessarily the iconic way of doing it. So on this particular ad, it's never too early to buy Advent calendars. This is if you celebrate Christmas um, or delicious festive cakes or puddings or pies and shop bit by bit, bite after bite. They've got a gorgeous picture of a stack of mince pies. Um, a dollop of cream on with spread the cost of Christmas. Think about how not only clever that is, but how iconic that is. This is a brand that's well known, well loved by many um, and is a UK brand for the Americans. Um, because one of the other things about Iconic was um, we've had people from the UK join it, but we've had people that are based in Thailand, in America, in Canada as well. So we've had people all over the world. So don't let that stop you. What I loved about this was rather than saying, I'm Waitrose, I'm a shop, I sell food and I sell things like pepper grinders and you know fresh bread and things like that. And I guess I'm like a supermarket. They've said, we're Waitrose and we're going to help you spread the cost of Christmas by encouraging you to buy things that you want for Christmas early. Things like advent calendars, things like delicious festive cakes. Things like puddings and pies. And if you shop bit by bit, you can enjoy it bite after bite. 
Did you see what they did there? They said, buy the good stuff now to enjoy later. Now, the reason I took a bit of, you know, offence at that, <laughs> not really offence, but I commented cheekily, I shared it with my friends, an advert. I shared it with my friends and said, dear Waitrose, you're wrong. If I go out and buy mince pies, I will eat at least two of them a day the moment I've bought them. Served warm with lots of cream. Thank you. <laughs> so they're going to love people like me. What that actually does is it doesn't try to cover too much. It doesn't try to stuff too much in. It doesn't say, by the way, we do gluten free, dairy free, vegan options as well, which they do. It just has you thinking about spreading the cost of Christmas. What that does for some people is it makes them think, I'm going to get organised this year. So not only have Waitrose now instigated the buying of cakes, sweet things and puddings for people who are celebrating Christmas. It's also got people to think about getting more organised in time. And when they go in to find their puddings and they see their candles, like festive candles, maybe cards and chocolates and all sorts of other things, maybe bowls to serve them in because, you know, the mother-in-law's coming round and they want to make a good impression. What else do you think that they're going to do? So this is a really, I think, a great demonstration. And I'll post this in the comments below um, where you're looking at this. And for those of you on YouTube, I'll just post it. I'll tag in Waitrose so they know I'm not trying to plagiarise them. Um, but I'll, tag, I'll share this advert so that you can see how simple it is, how succinct it is, how visible it is, how much impact it has. The story that it starts to open up and share um, and the way that it does it in true Waitrose style. Um, I really hope they run that ad again this year because I think it was fantastic. Um, they probably, their marketing department probably moved on to other things. I might put a request in on LinkedIn or something like that. So those are ways that we can be um, iconically visible. It doesn't mean using coercion or force. It doesn't mean pushing people into things that they don't want or don't want to do. This is really, really important. So your next step is to decide, is this something that I would like? Am I going to run it again is something that people ask me. Um, I'm not sure is the honest answer. Um, if I do, it won't be until well into next year. I've got some projects that are coming up. I've got lots of speaking. This is a speaker heavy time of year up until like February or so. And I'm also writing a book. So that's taking um, quite a bit of my time up too. So um, the honest thing is, I don't know. If your mind is going to, I think I like the sound of this, but I'll wait till next time, then it's probably likely that Iconic isn't ready for you and you're not ready for it. OK, and that's no shade on that. There are other things you can do with me. Um, if you're thinking, well, that price point is quite high. Um, you know, my my thing is think about if this is speaking to you and that's the only thing that is stopping you. Is it that you are um, looking to make more than that in kind of like the sales for the, the things that you want to do? Is it that there's an underlying fear of diving in or is it that it just isn't for you? Maybe it's just not for you. So it's not going to feel right. If you're a cat owner, you're not going to want to splurge out on expensive dog food. It's just not your thing, you know. So um, is that right for you? Might, maybe not. Maybe you want more private support, more one to one support. So the this isn't for me is fine, too. But what I want you to do is what a lot of people won't say to you is to trust your gut. If it's something that's for you, look at how you can make that happen. And if you're not feeling it, don't wait for me or try and jump on a call with me for me to persuade you into it, because that's not what I do. I'll ask you lots of questions. I'll I'll do that to find out where you're at and whether this is a good fit or not. Um, and if there's something else that's a good fit, I, I can offer that to you. But if it's not a great um, match, then I'll also tell you that too. So don't look to me to persuade you. Come persuaded, come with questions and um, let's see what we can do. But here's what I want to leave you with. The whole reason that I do this visibility work isn't so that more people... Um, point and shout at me in the street and go oh my god there's Jenny Kovacs it's because I know your voice matters 
I know that for you running this business, it matters deeply to you. And I want to tell you that in order to do that, you matter too. That's it. I hope to see you in Iconic. Got any questions, send me a message. Until then, bye for now.